Well, if you would this morning, open your Bibles to, uh, to two places this morning. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6, and then we'll get to Hebrews chapter 11. Ephesians chapter 6, and then Hebrews chapter 11. I'll tell you what, before we do that, everybody grab your Bible. You got your Bible? Hold it up over your head. Say this after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is God's Word speaking to me. I have what it says I have. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. And I boldly confess that my flesh is awake that my mind is alert, that my spirit is receptive, and that I'll never, ever, ever, ever be the same. I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm ready, and I'm so good looking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Amen. Are you trusting? Are you, are you there, right? Are we going to hear from God today? Yeah. Amen, amen, I believe it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to, this morning what I want to do is kind of remind all of us of some things, and some, some of you may know some of these principles, some of these truths that I'm going to share today. Some of you may be new to you, or maybe a different take on it, but you know, it's important for us to be reminded of things, amen? You know, there are times I have to go back and and look at things that I've heard in the past, or look at subjects and remind myself. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And so it helps us to go back and hear things again. Amen. Amen. And so we're gonna we're gonna look at some things today. And so I want us to ta- start with the armor of God in Ephesians chapter six. We're gonna start with the armor of God, and we'll start with um, oh, let's go ahead and start in verse. Oh, let's start in verse thirteen. Okay. And it says, therefore, take up, and I'm reading in the NASB right now, therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist on the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped on your feet the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16 is the one I want to get to. And in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And then he goes on to talk about the helmet of salvation, right? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? But verse uh, 16, he says, In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Did you realize that your faith is what helps you to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your faith, your shield of faith. When you have your shield up, you are protecting yourself from what the enemy is throwing at you. That's what a shield does, doesn't it? Right? You pick up a shield and you stand behind a shield and the shield is the protection. And the shield quenches. And what does Scripture say? It doesn't quench in just some of the fire. No, it quenches all. That tells me then that there is not anything that the devil or the enemy can throw at you that your shield of faith cannot quench. Nothing. Nothing. That shield, if you will have it up, will protect you. That shield will take care of you, but you have to have it up. And unfortunately, I've seen in life over the course of many years of being a Christian, a lot of people who don't have their shield of faith up and they're getting bombarded with flaming arrows or fiery darts or whatever you want to call it and, and they're just taking it left and right because they don't have their shield up. Now I want you to notice something here. We're going to look at a couple of things here in, in this passage of Scripture. But in, I want you to, to notice a phrase. In verse 13 it says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God. Therefore, take up the full armor of God. Now, in verse 8, I'm sorry, 
In verse 16, he says, in addition to all, what? Take up. In addition to all, take up. That tells me several things. It tells me several things. The first thing it tells me is that if the shield is in my hand, I took it. If the shield is in your hand, you took it. You have the shield in your hand because you took it. It's not automatically going to be there. You have to take it. You have to take it. Amen? Now that then tells me a couple other things. Okay? If you're going to take it, you have to know what it is. Because you can't take something if you don't know what it is. Right? If I tell you to go take a bottle of water, but you've never seen a bottle of water before, and you walk over and there's all this stuff on the table, you don't know what to take because you wouldn't know what a bottle of water is, right? So you have to know what it is if you're going to take it. Well, that tells me something else. That tells me then that if you don't know what it is, you could grab the wrong thing and think that it's faith. You can grab the wrong thing and, and not realize you're not grabbing the shield, okay? And how many, do you re, how many of you realize if you go and you grab a bed sheet and hold a bed sheet up, it's not going to protect you from the fiery darts of the enemy, is it? Okay, you have to take up the shield of faith. And so faith, we find, is very, very important. Very, very important to our lives because we have to take it up. When that shield is in my hand. So then we, so what I want to do today is because it's so important and because it protects us and because it, it's what's going to quench all the attacks of the enemy on our life, what I want us to do today is I want us to take a look at faith and I want us to, number one, answer a couple questions. Number one, what is faith? Okay. And then answer number two, which is kind of two questions in one, kind of goes together. What does faith look like and how does faith operate? Okay. So we're going to try to answer those questions this morning. Is that okay? Yes. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You believing with me? Yes. All right. All right. Let's stay hooked up. Hallelujah. Clarity from the Spirit today. Amen. Now, one of the things I want you to notice in Luke chapter 5, I want to just uh, share something with you over here in Luke chapter 5 that I think will, in, will show you something. And... Um, you know, in Luke chapter 5, this is the, the story where Jesus is, is teaching, right? And Jesus is, is uh, he's in this house, and he's preaching, and he's teaching. And these men, there's a man on a stretcher, and his buddies and his friends got him, and they're trying to get him to Jesus, right? But the house is full, and they can't get in, right? They can't get in because of the crowd, it says. Scripture says there's so many people. And so what these guys did, they did what any good Christian would do, right? They started ripping the roof off the place, right? They got up on the roof, amen, and they started ripping back the tiles, right? And then they take this man and they lower him down in front of Jesus, right? Now, I want you to know what real, I just, I just want you to notice what Jesus said to them. And in, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 20, well, Jesus, it's not what Jesus said, okay? But I want you to notice what the scripture says here in, in, in verse 20. And, and he, Jesus, seeing their faith, said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now, I'm not going to focus on the sins are forgiven you part, okay? What I want you to notice is that Jesus saw their faith. He saw their faith. So that tells me then that faith can be seen. Faith can be seen. In fact, faith can be seen in a way that it's so clear that when you see it, you know it's faith. It's very clear. You can know when you're in faith. You can know when you have the shield up and when you don't. You can know because faith can be seen clearly. And you can see it in yourself and you can see it in others. That's good news, isn't it? We can know. Hallelujah. That's good news to us that we can know when we have the shield up and when we don't. Amen? So Jesus saw their faith. 
Now, if you would flip back over with me to the second opening that I had for you in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Now, you just knew we were going to go there, right? Because anytime you start talking about faith, we end up in Hebrews, don't we? <laughs> I mean, this is the faith chapter of the Bible, right? Well, this is where uh, the Apostle Paul talks about faith, and he describes faith, and then he goes on verse after verse after verse and shows living examples of what he just described, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this, and, and we're going to try to unlock some things that are going to hopefully help you today, because that's my goal for this, is to help you today, so that you can see it clearly. You can see faith clearly, because it's very important to you and to your life, okay? And so... In Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 1, and I'm going to look at this, let's just look at this in the King James, okay, because that's the way we all know it, it's the way we've read it forever, right? <laughs> Amen. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of of things not seen. Now, a lot of people have, have said that this is a Bible definition of faith, right? Because it says now faith is. And, and in one way, that's, that's true. But really, I submit to you that this verse tells you more what faith does than what faith really is, okay? But we're going we're gonna to dive into it, and we're going to look at it, okay? So I'm going to look at three key words in this verse that I think will really help you. Three key words that will help you see some things, okay? The first word actually is the word faith. Now faith. We're just going to go through it. Now faith. What is this word? What does this word mean? So this word, faith, is the Greek word pistus, P-I-S-T-U-S, T-U-S, or pistus, or, all right, now if you're a Greek scholar, don't get on me for the way I pronounce this, okay? I'm not good. I'm not Greek, amen? Okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, um, you know, those of you from Oklahoma, you know, you, you, should, you shouldn't make fun of me anyway because all you guys don't know how to say the word pecan. <laughs> okay, so I know, you know, since, the first, since I was in first grade spelling class, all the way through all these years of seeing that word on menus and articles and dictionaries, I've never once found the letter U in the word. Um, but anyway, praise God. Tough crowd, tough crowd. Okay, comes from the Greek word pistus or pistus, P-I-S-T-U-S. And it literally means a firm persuasion. It literally means a firm persuasion or a conviction based upon hearing. A firm persuasion. Everybody say that with me. Firm persuasion. Firm persuasion. Or a conviction based upon hearing hearing. Romans 10, 17 says what? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So your faith comes through your hearing. What happens when you hear? You become firmly persuaded of what you're hearing, right? That's faith. When, when, when you hear the promise of God, when you hear the Word of God, and you grab onto that word, and you are firmly persuaded of that word, that becomes faith in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just going to mention a couple things here, okay? Just going to throw a little side note in. <laughs> Amen? And when we're talking about faith, okay, you have to have the word of God as the basis for your faith, Okay? If you don't have the Word of God, then there really isn't any basis for your faith. People want to go out and, and go outside the Word of God and try to say they're believing for crazy stuff. And it's not, if it's not in the Word or if you don't have a, a revelation to your heart from the Holy Spirit that this is for you, then you are outside of the Word of God. Stick with the Word. Stick with what the Word says and what the Word promises. Amen? Amen. I remember one time years and years ago, I heard Brother Hagin was teaching. And, uh, and he shared a story, and he said that some, somebody had told him that they were believing for a thousand oil wells. And he said, well, you can't believe for that. He said, if you could, I'd already have them. <laughs> Amen. Because it is outside the word of God. Amen. Stick with the word. 
Stick with the Word. Stay grounded. Amen? Stay grounded. Stick with the Word. Amen? And the other thing you want to always remember, this is, I said I'd give you two little nuggets here. The other thing you always want to remember is that within the Word, the Word of God is seed. We heard Brother Juan talking about seed this morning. The Word is seed. Okay? And what is in a seed? Life or power? Power. In the seed for a plant is the power to produce that plant. In a seed for a tree, there's the power to produce that tree. Seed is power. And with every promise in the Word, within every promise in the Word of God is the power to fulfill that promise in your life. Within every promise in the Word of God. Amen? And so when you become persuaded of the Word of God, you are connecting to the power of God. Amen? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Now, I think probably one of the best ways for us to really see this in action is to look at Abraham. To look at Abraham's life. Because Abraham was known as what? The father of faith, right? Well, why is he the father of faith? Why is he the father of our faith? There were some things in his life, there were some things that he did, amen, that caused us to call him the father of faith. And so if you're going to understand faith, I think it's good that we look at Abraham's life and look at what did Abraham do, amen? And so let's just look at Abraham real quick. We're going to go over to uh, Romans chapter 4. You doing all right? All right, praise God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to look at verse 20 and 21. Now remember, faith, you're being fully persuaded of what? Of the Word, right? You're being fully persuaded of what the Word of God says, what God says. Amen? And in verse 20, chapter 4, verse 20, it says this, it says, yet with, uh, yet Yes, that's where I want to start. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm starting in the right place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20, yet with respect to the what? Promise of God. He had God's word. With respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully what? Assured, or King James says what? Persuaded. Persuaded. Faith is a firm persuasion. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. God gave Abraham a promise. God spoke to Abraham and said, I am going to make you the father of many nations. And he believed God. He took that, that word of God, and there was no doubt in his mind. He said, I believe it. Okay, now that, that in itself, you have to understand, when you believe it, you're accepting it as truth. See, a lot of people hear the word of God, or they hear the things of God, but they don't believe it. They don't accept it as truth, and so they never operate in any faith. You have to accept it as truth. You hear the word of God, you accept that word as truth, and then you say, I believe. I have faith. I am fully persuaded of what God has promised, and I'm fully persuaded that what he promised he is going to bring it to pass. Amen. And this is what Abraham was saying. He was fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded that what God promised, he was going to be able to bring to pass. Amen? Now, let's talk about this for a minute because I left out a key part to this when I said God told him, you're going to be the father of many nations. Let's back up. And look at verse 18, where it says, In hope, against hope, he believed, so that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. Now, what does that mean? Against hope, he believed in hope. Let's talk about that for a second. One thing I didn't tell you about Abraham was that he was 99 years old. He was 99 years old. And Sarah, his wife, was 90. So what does it say against hope? He believed in hope. There was no reason on earth that he had any belief in the natural or any reason to believe in the natural that this would happen. No reason at all to believe. He's 99. 
She's 90. And, and, and on top of it, she couldn't even conceive when she was 20. If you read the scripture, she was barren. She didn't, they didn't have any kids. And God tells him, you're going to be the father of many nations. Now, how many of you realize to be the father of many nations is not just one baby? You got to have a lot of babies. And they got to have a lot of babies. And they got to have a lot of babies. And they got to have a lot of babies before you have the father of many nations, right? Amen? Amen? And so this is before him every day. What he sees in the natural is before him every single day. But yet he has God's promise. And he staggered not at God's promise and unbelief. But he was strong in faith, believing that God was going to cause it to happen. That God was going to see it happen. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine 99-year-old Abram and 90-year-old Sarah going into the doctor? Well, doctor, we want a checkup. Well, why is that? Well, we're going to have some children. Can you imagine? He's 99 years old. Amen? And she's 90 and couldn't conceive when she was 20. You understand, this is before him every day, before his eyes. These are scriptures written on a page, but these are real people. They lived it. Every day in our life, there's there's, there's the reality of what we see that's sitting in front of us. But we have God's promise. We have God's promise. And Abraham believed. He staggered not at the promise promise of unbelief. Amen? Against hope, he believed in hope. And not only did he believe, but he acted on what he believed. Well, what do you mean, Brother Jay? How did he act on what he believed? Well, if you follow the story, you'll see that Abraham was not known as Abraham. His name was actually Abram. And he had been, been called Abram, and Mr. Abram, or, you know, Sir Abram, for his whole life. But at that point, he changed his name to Abraham, which literally means father of many nations. He changed his name. He got everybody together, all his people together, all, his, all of his group together, the whole gang, the whole, all the people that he had working for him, all the people who knew him, his family. And he said, you don't call me Abram anymore. No, 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 no. It's Abraham. It's Abraham. You call me the father of many nations. I call myself the father of many nations. And I'm sure there could have been some people in the back that were tempted to snicker and laugh, right? Because he's 99 years old. But it didn't bother Abraham. See, you can't worry about it when other people are snickering. Or, or If you have a word from the Lord, <laughs> you trust in God, not, not, not other people. Amen? Amen? Amen. When God, when you have a word from God, then your faith is in Him. You're persuaded of His truth. Don't let other people shoot their flaming arrows at you and get you out of, the, out of, out of believing God and get away from trusting God. Amen? Amen? Abraham didn't do that. And in fact, the Bible even talks about it wasn't just Abraham. No, it wasn't just Abraham. If you go over to Hebrews chapter 11, where we just were, you'll see, you'll see, it wasn't just Abraham. In Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 11, it says, By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive, even beyond the proper time of life since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, even from one man, okay, now get this, one man, what does it say? And the one who was as good as dead at that. There were born descendants who were just as the stars of heaven in number and the immeasurable grains of sand along the seashore. Tell me God doesn't perform miracles. Amen. Amen. Sarah believed too. Now she laughed at first, right? If you follow the story. But she got in faith. Amen. 
So you know what? Even if, even if at some point in your life you didn't believe or, or whatever, it doesn't mean you can't change. It doesn't mean you can't jump into faith. It doesn't mean you can't trust God. You just start today. Amen. You start believing God. You start trusting God. You start pro- trusting in the promises of God. Amen. And you'll see th- things change in your life. We'll see the promises of God. Now, one, one other nugget I want to give you here in Romans where we read, I should have given it to you while you were there, but in Romans where, where, where we read, it said that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Another thing that will really help you when you're reading the scripture is to understand that the words faith and the word belief are used interchangeably. They're used interchangeably. They mean the same thing. Okay, so when he says he believed, that means he was in faith. When he says he was in faith, that means he believed. Amen? And you can see that. He did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith. And, and if you study, you'll see that, that that happens in many, many different places in Scripture. You'll see that those words are used interchangeably. Amen? That's something that can help you. Amen? Trying to give you some things that can help you today. Okay? So, amen. So Abraham was fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded that what God promised would come to pass. Now, let's take that to us today, fully persuaded. We're firmly persuaded or fully persuaded. Well, some of our favorite scriptures, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for what? We live by our faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not by sight, or we walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? You live by your firm persuasion and not by what you see. That's what Abraham did. He was firmly persuaded in what God said, and he was living his life according to that and not according to what he could see. Amen? Amen. Your firm persuasion. The just, Hebrews 10, 38, the just shall live by their firm persuasion. We walk by fight, by faith. We live by faith, right? All these scriptures that we talk about, it's a firm persuasion. It's your conviction based upon the word of God. Are you firmly persuaded of God's word? That's what you walk by. That's what you live by. And in Ephesians 6.16, we realize that that is what you pick up as your shield. And that is what protects you when the enemy is coming at you with all kinds of thoughts and all kinds of words and all kinds of ideas and all kinds of suggestions. And you hold that shield up and you say, no, 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 Mr. Devil. God said this, and God promised this, and He is faithful. Amen? Is He faithful? He's faithful. Glory to God. He's always faithful. He always comes through. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is faithful. You hold up that shield, and you block those darts. You block those things of the enemy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad I came today. I don't know about you yet. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So let's look at, I told you I was going to give you three key words. Amen? Three key words. So let's look at the second and third one kind of go together a little bit. Yes and no. But anyway, we'll see it here. I trust. Hallelujah. So back to Hebrews 11, 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, for us to understand this substance of things hoped for, this is what I want to talk about just for a minute, substance of things hoped for. What does this word substance mean? Because this can get kind of, kind of, uh, you know, kind of cloudy to us or kind of gray to us, right? In our thinking, you know, just, you know. Well, that word is the Greek word hypostasis, H-I-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-S, hypostasis. And it literally means a setting under or a firm foundation. A firm foundation. Uh, some translations will translate it basis or grounds or confidence. I, l- I like foundation. It's a literal word. It's, it's, a, it's a firm foundation. Now, what is a foundation? Now, this building has a foundation, right? A firm foundation. We hope it's a firm foundation, right? <laughs> Praise God. I, I believe it is. But you have a firm foundation that the building stands on, right? How many of you have ever gone out house hunting? Anybody gone out house? You know, we've moved several times in our life, and we go out house hunting. And, you know, when we walk into these houses, we're moving, we walk in, you know, I'm not always looking at all the 
the pretty lipstick they put on the, on the walls and the carpets and how they cleaned out all their junk and tried to make it look great. I mean, that's all good and good, but I want to know, is the foundation right? And we'll go outside and we'll walk around the house and we'll be looking at the bricks and we'll be looking at how things are set up and, you know, because nobody wants to buy a money pit, right? You want to make sure there's a firm foundation that that house is built on. Because if you've got foundation problems, everybody knows, whoo, that's, that's a problem. So your faith is a firm foundation, is what the scripture says. It's a firm foundation. Well, it's a firm foundation for what? Well, let's go back to the scripture. What stands on our firm foundation? Well, it says, now faith is the substance of things, what? Hoped for. Hoped for. It's the foundation of Hope. Hope. Now, when you start talking about hope, you always have to define it. You always have to define it because hope, the word hope means an entirely different thing than the way we use it in modern vernacular. The way we use it in modern usage, everything has been watered down until the word hope really means very, very little. You know, if I, if I talk to Larry and I say, Larry, is God going to do that thing for you? And if Larry was to look at me and say, well, I sure hope so. Well, what's he saying? He's saying, well, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I'd sure like it to. I sure hope so. It's like a wish. That is not what the Bible is talking about when it says the substance of things hoped for. Listen to this. Listen to this. The word hope is the Greek word elipis, E-L-P-I-S. And it literally means a confident expectation with joy. And if you look at American dictionaries, you'll see it defined over and over and over again as expectation. And some of them will say confident expectation. Some of them will say joyful confident expectation. You see, your faith is the foundation for expectation, for what you expect. We expect God to do what God promised He was going to do. Amen? Amen. And we believe it because we got a firm foundation, and that firm foundation is our faith, because we are fully persuaded of the Word of God. We are fully persuaded of what God said He would do, and we have judged Him faithful, who has promised. Glory to God, glory to God. A joyful, confident expectation. Now that we've learned these three words, you can look back at Hebrews 11.1 and say, read it this way. You can say, now our firm persuasion is the foundation upon which a joyful, confident expectation stands. Glory to God. Are you expecting? Glory to God, we're expecting. Our faith, it, now our firm persuasion is the foundation which a joyful, confident expectation stands. Glory to God. Now, how does, this, how does this work? Well, let's take it real simple. Let's take it real simple, right? Scripture says, by faith you have been saved, right? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, by faith you have been saved. This is the easiest way to see it. Easiest way for us to look at it. For by faith you have, or by grace you have been saved through faith. Your faith activated the grace of God. God provided it. God graced it to you. But your faith activated that grace. By, by grace you are saved through faith. Amen? Amen? Grace is God's part. Faith is our part. And so we activate the grace of God through our faith. You operated in faith when you got saved, and you didn't even realize it. <laughs> that's, that's the... That's the good thing about it. It's that, it's that easy. You know, Romans 10 verses, verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen? So what did you do? Well, you heard the good news of the gospel, right? You accepted that as truth. You became fully persuaded of that. You confessed it out of your mouth. You acted it. You put action to it, you confessed it, 
and now you expect to go to heaven. We expect a lot of other things from our salvation too, right? But we have an expectation to, to be in heaven, that God is up there right now getting our mansion ready. Amen? He's doing the redecorating, and He's doing all the good things to it, and He's getting it ready for us, and it's going to be beautiful when we get there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We expect that. We expect that to happen. Our expectation stands upon the faith that we have. And so if you're in faith, you're expecting. Amen? Amen. If you're in faith, you are expecting. Yo, in, in, in Titus chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, in hope of eternal life. In hope of eternal life. Well, did I write the wrong? Okay. It's there. I may have got the wrong verse. <laughs> but he refers to the hope of eternal life. Amen? The hope of eternal life. Well, if somebody says to you, are you going to heaven? And you say, well, I sure hope so. Well, then you're not. Either you believe it or you don't. Either you're persuaded or you're not. Either you're walking in it or you're not, right? That is not what you're saved by. You are saved by faith and you have an expectation. And when someone says, are you going to heaven? You say, absolutely. I know I'm saved. I know, I'm, I know eternity is mine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, it has to be that way. It has to be that way because of this verse in Hebrews 11:6. 6. If you back up just a little bit, oh, we're in Hebrews. Actually, we're in Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 6 says that without faith, it is what? It's rare. Oh, you don't see it very often. Oh, every once in a while you might see it. No. By faith, it's impossible. You never see anybody pleasing God with anything that there is no faith in. You know, last time I went last year when I preached, we talked about this word impossible. And we were talking about how it is impossible for God to lie, right? Because, you know, it's rare. When you, when you see the word impossible connected with God, it's very rare. You don't see that very often because he's God, right? We, you connect impossible with God. But we learned last year that it's impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. He is complete and utterly truthful. We call the word of God the word of truth. The spirit of God is the spirit of truth. He is 100% truthful. If God was to ever tell one lie, he'd cease to be God. The entire universe is held up by the word of his power because he's full of truth and he cannot lie. The universe would collapse if he told a lie. And then we would have no reason to believe him and no ability to trust him. Because he's lied before, will he lie again? No, no, it's impossible for God to lie. Well, there's something else that's just as impossible. It's impossible for you to please the Lord without any faith. You get saved through faith. We walk in faith, right? We, we just saw it. We live in faith. We hold up the shield of faith. Everything we do has to have an element of faith in it, a element of, an element of trust, an element of expectation, an element of persuasion of God and God's truth and God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we can do in our lives, and we, it can sound real good, but it's not always faith-filled, right? Is it possible... For you to pray all night, not in faith. People do it all the time. It's called worrying. Right? And they, and they, and they pray all night, oh God, look at my problem. Oh God. Well, he knew it before you started. Oh God, tell me about my problem. Tell me. And they talk to him about it all night long, and they tell him about it all night long. And you see him in the morning, and they're just worn out, and they're dejected. And you know they'd have been better off asleep, getting rest. But they're just, they're all worried about it. Look, you know, you can go to prayer and you can ask for the sun, the moon, and the stars. But when you get up, your faith has got to be there. Amen? Amen? Because God cannot be pleased with an unbelieving prayer. 
It says so right there. Without faith, impossible to please God. You could give an offering today for $1 billion and not please God unless you gave it how? In faith. And you might say, well, Brother Jay, you know, of course they'd be given in faith. No, not always. People give for all kinds of reasons. You know, they might be trying to buy influence. They might be trying to, to they need another tax deduction. Or, there's all kinds of reasons people can give, and they don't always give in faith. But not us here, right? We're giving in faith. Amen? We're trusting God. We're believing God's word. Amen. We want to give in faith. So don't be worrying. Stay in faith. When those problems come up, stay in faith. Pray in faith and then stand up believing and hold your shield up. Hold your shield up. Because the enemy is going to come at you with doubts. He's going to come at you with things. I mean, he is one sly, silly rascal. And he'll come at you all day long. And he'll try to get you off, and he'll try to take you down. But you just hold up that shield, and if you hold up that shield, there's nothing he can do because the Scripture says it quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy. All of them. So you hold up your shield, amen? You hold up your shield. Hallelujah. In fact, 2 Corinthians 3.12 says that since we have such a hope, we're very bold. We are very bold because we have an expectation and we have a hope. Amen. We believe, we trust God and we expect God to do what God said he would do. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now the back part of this verse, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evident, or which is the firm foundation that our hope stands on. But it also says it's the evidence of things not seen. Now, your faith is evidence for what you don't see yet. Abraham didn't see the miracle yet. He didn't see the manifestation yet of, his, of the promise. But his faith was evidence of that. That's how faith operates. I don't have this yet, but I have this. And this is my evidence that it's going to happen. Amen? The evidence of things not seen. Now, I just want to clear up something else here, because when we talk about faith, and you talk about, there's a lot of people out there that, that they say this, and I get tired of seeing this, and I get tired of hearing it, but people always have this phrase, seeing is believing. Have you ever heard that, or people say stuff like that? It's such a wrong statement. It's complete falsehood. It's not true. Seeing is not believing. Seeing is seeing. Once you see it, you don't have to believe it because you can see it, right? Your faith is, 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 is the evidence for what you don't see, but once you see it, you don't have to be in faith for it anymore. Once it's manifested, once you have it, I'm not in faith for it anymore because I already have it, right? I'm not believing for it anymore because I already have it, amen? You know, if, if you're believing for healing and God pr provides a healing for your body, you know, you're in faith about that. You're believing for that. You're expecting that. But then once it happens, now I have it. I don't have to believe for it anymore. I can see it. Right? So seeing is not believing. They're different. And you got to understand that what you see a lot of times out of your eyes is just like Abraham looking at himself, looking at, the, at, at his body. He had to say, no, I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to stick over here. I will not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. I will not stagger at it from unbelief because I can see it. <laughs> you know, I thought about this the other day. I was putting this together. You ever uh, talk to people who are looking for something and they can't, you know what I mean? They're trying to find something and they're looking and they're looking and they're looking. And you talk to them and you say, well, did you find that thing? Oh, yeah, it was in the last place I looked. <laughs> really? Have you ever run into anybody that said, oh, I found it, but I'm still looking for it? <laughs> anybody ever done that? I've never run into anybody that said it. Why? Because I have it now. I don't have to be looking for it anymore. Right? I have it now. It's in my possession. I don't have to look for it or believe for it or expect to find it, right? I don't have to have expectation because I already have it. Amen? I've already found it. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith stands 
on that which is not seen. And when God promises you something, when God gives you something in the Word, this is important. You need to get this down in you. You need to get it down in you, okay? That you, you, you become fully persuaded of that truth. And nothing moves you off of that. Nothing will move you off of that. You may say, but I don't see it yet. No. But, but it's coming. You're in faith for it. Your faith is the, is the evidence of it. Everybody say this after me. Say, persuaded of something true. Expecting something good. And excited about it. Say again, persuaded of something true. Expecting something good. And excited about it. You're excited about it. Faith can be seen. You're expecting and you're excited, right? And when we see the expectation and we see the excitement and we see the joy, we know the faith is there. Faith can be seen. Amen? And when I'm expecting and I'm excited and I'm joyful about it, I can see faith in myself and I know I've got that shield up. And, and you just stay expecting. You just stay expecting no matter what. Somebody calls you on the phone. Well, that could be it. That could be it. That could be it. You pick up the phone. That wasn't it. Well, that's okay. It's still coming. Oh, somebody wants to see you today. Somebody wants to talk to you today. Oh, that could be it. That could be it. That could be Oh, it's not it. That's all right. It's still coming. And you held on to that heightened expectation. How long do you hold on to it? As long as it takes. As long as it takes to see it manifested in, in your life, to see the promise happen. As long as it takes. And see, this is where the test of faith happens. When hours turn into days, and days turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months, and months could turn into years, don't you waver. Don't you, you fight the good fight of faith, the Apostle Paul said, the Holy Spirit said. Nothing wavering, you stay in faith, you fight the good fight. Right? You never stop believing, you never stop trusting God. Don't get out of faith, because if you do, you'll stop pleasing God. Stay in faith. Keep trusting Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. Abraham changed his name to the father of many nations. He called himself. He did what God did. God called those things which be not as though they are. And he did that. And some of you may have to change the name of your body to healed right? Some of you may have to change the name of your car to paid for. What kind of car is that, brother? That's a paid for car. And I'm believing for God to, to provide in a way to take care of it. Amen. 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 And this is where you need to have good faith friends and good faith buddies, right? Because when you start getting, getting a little bit torn, right? You, you call up your good faith buddy, you call up a good faith friend and you say, um, um, tell me I'm healed. Don't, don't go into some crying thing, I'm all the going through all this. No, no, no. Shh. zip. Just say, tell me I'm healed. And a good faith buddy, a good faith friend will know exactly what you're talking about. And they'll jump all over that. And they'll jump all over that. And you say, tell me that God's going to come through for this. Oh, it's absolutely going to come through for you. Have you sown seed and sown seed and sown seed? Absolutely. It's right around the corner. You're closer to it than you've ever been. Hallelujah. And stir yourself back up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stir yourself back up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 